kinks and fetishes are a very underrated aspect of sexual integration, right? You know, kinks and fetishes are something that help in your ability to create, establish, and really create sustainable sexual attraction between you and your partner. It gives you the ability to be able to connect on a certain level sexually that you're not going to be able to have that same connection sexually with every single person that you come across automatically. And if you do, it's going to be because you've learned to teach whatever it is you like, which from a masculine dominant perspective, being able to teach whatever it is that you like is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Because then it also roots in the aspect of learning something new into part of an individual's attachment to you and learning something new when it comes to dealing with the man for a woman is something that begins to bridge that gap between sex emotions and in logic the mentality of it right the mental the 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 psychological aspect of things right like i talk about overstimulation and different aspects of how that can affect sex lives and and what people are attracted to and what they deal with. But overstimulation is something that is very, um, is very subjective. You know, overstimulation is simply when you become and grow accustomed to experiences that you will be unwilling or unable to integrate into the type of long-term scenario or relationship that you want, which is like, let's say, you are a woman and you don't want to be in a relationship with the bisexual man, right? But you get accustomed to having, you know, group sex where there's at least two men who are having sex with you and also sex with each other at the same time. And then that becomes something that takes you to a place where one man may lack the ability to do it. And then also it could put you into a scenario where you are sexually attracted to perhaps the idea of two men who are very sexually fluid but as far as how you feel about that in a long-term relationship you wouldn't want to deal with that type of man see that would be overstimulation like let's say you're a man and you want to be with the woman right like you your idea of a relationship is to be with the woman but your greatest sexual experiences in your life were being penetrated by a man right so when you understand that that's something that's going on and it's something that permeates your experiences then that is something that can be overstimulating compared to what your past is what your present is and then what you desire your future to be because one of the most important things when it comes to being sexually integrated is that your sexual shadow the dark sides of your sexual nature the more uh, the more wild side that you have is something that can resonate with your partner. Your partner can resonate with it. And that you can go to newer, better, further places as far as your sexual experiences. Now, it doesn't always have to be more on the wild side. Sometimes it can be more so along the lines of mixing sex with emotions and, uh, and being more so experiencing intimacy, right? But that's something that you want to have. And having kinks and fetishes and lifestyles and different things like that, that you're able to integrate and are willing to integrate into your relationship in the long term is something that kind of sets your relationship apart. Right. But it also makes sexual attraction more easily establishable and it makes it more sustainable. The compatibility, the chemistry of the matter. Like, let's say uh, you have a foot fetish, right? Let's say you have a foot fetish as a man or whatever it is, whatever fetish you have. Me, I have a foot fetish. Let's say you have a foot fetish. If you're with your woman and she gains some weight, but it's easy for her to sustain how pretty her feet are, she's got to keep them done and stuff like that, then it's going to be easier to maintain that. Also, being attracted to something that not everybody is attracted to it adds another layer and another element of validation that she can receive, you know, as far as sexual validation. So that's something that can make her feel sexy. Even if, let's say, she gains a little bit of weight 
or you know she's getting a little bit older right let's say you're you have a thing for let's say you're developing a thing for uh older women like let's say it's a a kink for mature porn or something like that well if you have that different type of kink then what can happen along the way is that by having that that kink and that fetish you can sustain having attraction for your woman as she gets older right let's say your woman or you let's say there's a, a certain cuck cuck queen cuck cold fetish thing going on that's something that can create sustainability because not everybody else is going to be able to have that uh attraction that can also integrate the other aspects of a relationship like there's a big aspect of lifestyle and polyamory and there's a difference between polyamory and promiscuity right there's a difference between the two like there there's a big difference between having something you can integrate into the long-term type of dynamic that you want versus having a lifestyle that is for the time being that can overstimulate you in a way where you become accustomed to things you would not want to have in a long-term relationship, which is something that exasperates a Madonna whore complex or a gentleman gigolo complex. You know, when it comes to, let's say you develop a BBW kink or you, you know, develop a, like a fetish for BBWs or develop a, a, a fetish for mature porn, mature sexuality. That's something that creates sustainability. You know, a lot of what integration is about is developing that sexual compatibility and chemistry in a way that's sustainable over an extended period of time. So when you develop kinks for like, let's say mature, mature porn, right? Or BBW porn, then it creates this sustainability of sexual attraction that goes beyond the simple aspect of youth and exuberance that typically creates the sexual attraction that people experience for one another, right? Because you have to think about realize chemistry and curiosity right once realized chemistry becomes greater than curiosity that's when your primary partnership on a sexual level is something that is more sustainable it's more sustainable so you can look at it from the perspective of either monogamy or non-monogamy whichever one you want it to be but it makes that aspect of it more sustainable now let's say you're touching more on the polyamorous side let's say you experience compersion or you experience uh, that that cuck, cuck fetish, whether it's cuck queen or cuck old, you know, that's part of the dom sub dynamics, right? Where when you tap into the feminine submissiveness, you are attracted to how dominant your partner can be with another partner. And that is something that gives you the ability to allow your partner the freedom to outsource their sexual desires and their interests and their attraction without taking that as a personal affront to your own sexual desirability and the 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 connection that you have with an individual that's one benefit of polyamory right but when you are simply operating out of a gentleman gigolo complex or a madonna whore complex then that is something that can hurt it right like there's a difference between uh, polyamory and promiscuity you know there's something to understand with that but then you also have like swingers and stuff like that where you have the ability to outsource your desire for things that will be considered you know the youthful exuberance or your sexual curiosity and the foundation of your relationship is set up in a way to where it doesn't make an affront to how you feel about your partner it's the ability to separate sex and emotions in that particular way it's it's a powerful thing for making a relationship something that's a little bit more sustainable as far as the sexual attraction that you experience right so that's kind of the compersion and cuck aspect of it and you know as a woman gets older as a man gets older typically you're going to reach a point where you're not going to be necessarily in the same shape you were when you were 20 years old right like when you're 20 years old it's, it's going to be a little bit different you know as you get older as you reach into your your late 30s and your early 40s up into your 50s it's going to be a different way that your sexual attraction is going to work so having the ability to tap into kinks fetishes and different lifestyles is something that makes your attraction separate from the youth exuberance and those different aspects of what typically you can only have when you're relatively young right so it's about you know uh, developing those kinks developing those fetishes and most people may not have a certain level of that within their relationship dynamics 
you know, and I think about like, and I talked about that a little bit earlier in this video, the aspect of like the foot fetish, where there are certain things that are gonna be easier to sustain. You can develop a, cat a fetish for, let's say it's natural hair. I have a certain kink and fetish for natural hair. That is something that's gonna be a little bit easier to sustain than necessarily a woman who has, is gonna have a flat stomach for the rest of her life. That's not something that's always gonna be sustainable in the same way, you know, certain things that are predicated upon youth and exuberance, right? Uh, you know, there's big lips. You know, when you like big lips, I like big lips. That's something that a person will have for the rest of their life. So it's some more sustainable. You know, there's the, you know, the shape, you know, uh, instead of basing it on someone being uh, according to the body mass index, the BMI scale, it's more so based off of the way that the body is shaped and that's a little bit more sustainable than simply a person who is a size two, size four, someone who's smaller built, right? So it doesn't really matter whether it is going to be on a basis of a non-monogamous or a monogamous relationship, developing those kinks and those fetishes helps. You have to also think about the process of teaching something to somebody, right? There are different things that you learn over time that when you step into the masculine dominant and you can teach whatever it is that you like that creates a certain level of attachment between you and the other individual on a basis of they learn something new from you that gives them a certain level of validation from their ability to please you in that particular way, right? And it takes away a lot of the pressure uh, at times because what you want to have the ability to do is to take a certain aspect of your sexual attraction between you and your partner and to take it away from things that are not going to be sustainable right you can do your best to sustain them you want to still make sure you maintain a certain level of attraction but to push this into more of the realized chemistry versus curiosity or more into the actual sexual dynamic between you and your partner versus the novelty of okay this is a new person look how attractive they are it, you start to base it on things that are more so uh, about function instead of form right so it's like let's say she has some big lips and you like how she uses those big lips the big lips to give you some head that's fu that's function instead of form right let's say you teach a woman the ability to deep throw and let's say she didn't know before she got to you so now she's able to perform on you in a way that not everyone has the ability to do, which makes the pool of people who you would be naturally sexually compatible and attracted to uh, and compatible with a smaller list of people. And by making that a smaller list of people, then even if you come across somebody new, they may not have the same skill set as a person who you've already established a certain level of these things with, which can create a certain sustainability and attraction to the individual. Let's say it is a matter of it could be squirting it could be deep throat right there's this dominant aspect of sexuality the dom sub dynamics to where <coughs> when you're able to do things with one another that go outside the norm of what's typically desired and typically liked the more outlandish it gets or the more wild it gets or the further it gets from the typical norm of how sexuality works the more of an attachment is built for that individual person to where realized chemistry becomes greater than curiosity. It's just like um, if what you're most attracted to is just the look of a woman and her youthful exuberance and how her body is built and all these different aspects of things, maybe her lack of experience, then when you build a high level of experience with an individual to where they know your body, you know their body, you know the ins and outs of what satisfies one another, you can take each other to very deep and far places sexually, then it creates a certain sexual attachment with that individual that even if they meet somebody new who has the quote unquote look that they want, it's not gonna be guaranteed that they'll have the same thing. So it's good to work on setting new sexual goals and learning the body of your partner and vice versa in a way to where a brand new person that they meet probably won't have the ability to do the same exact things in a way that's going to create a higher level of pleasure and sensation. And then there's also the intimate aspect of it as well. Now there's the emotional aspect and then there's the kink aspect. 
There's kinks and fetishes, right? You know, there's different sexual acts that go outside of the, the realm of what typically goes along with the norm. Let's say you develop a kink or a fetish for a woman who is domesticated and you have a wife and she's a stay-at-home mom or whatever it is. And let's say you're attracted to her cooking in the kitchen, right? We have a lot more control over what we're sexually attracted to than we think we do. It's just a lot of people don't know how to do it. So they just assume that once it's gone, it's gone. It's not always that way. So there's different things that you may do in one, in one another's lives that can create a more sustainable aspect of sexual attraction between the two of them. You know, then there's the dominance and submissiveness aspect, right? So even within, like, even within polyamory, let's say that your woman only wants you to be dominant with her, right? If you reach a certain peak of dominance in the way that you deal with one another and your dom sub dynamic, and your woman is uncomfortable with another man being as dominant with her or uh, operating within the same dominant sexual acts that you have within one another, then it can create a scenario to where there is still something that is sacred between the two of you within your sexual dynamic. So even if she's sleeping with other people and you're sleeping with other people, you still have certain things that are outside of the norm that can be sacred to one another which creates a sustainability of the sexual attraction and things that are sacred between the two of you even if sex itself is not something that is off the limits or off the table as far as what you're willing to outsource so there's a lot of things that go along with it you know when it comes to how kinks fetishes we also have to look at the you know more the bdsm aspect like uh when you're able to take the sexual pleasure and arousal as well as the validation of giving pleasure and the validation of the level of expertise that your partner has that leads to attraction and able to mix that with you know the pleasure validation and the direction that you're going in you know good d and guidance that creates a certain sustainability of sexual attraction in a way that joins your non-sexual uh, compatibility and your non-sexual uh, relationship to your sexual relationship in a way where each one feeds into one another and even if you are in let's say a sapali or a swinger type of situation when you don't allow that to mix with other people then you still have that sustainable aspect of your own sexual sexual attraction between one another that isn't going to be muddied necessarily by dealing with other people right and it's not all about just whether you're going to be poly some, some a lot of this these things can work within the dynamic of being uh monogamous or you can just be what some people consider to be uh, uh unicorn hunters right where both of you have a certain attraction to each other but you both like outside women right if you both like women outside then that gives your woman the ability to uh, alleviate the pressure of having to compete with the younger women because she's also enjoying those younger women. And then by being able to uh, relate to each other in that particular way, it gives you the ability to sustain the sexual attraction and the connection you have to one another on an emotional and on a mental level without feeling the pressure of competition with the younger people who can come into your lives. You know, there's a lot of different ways this can work, right? Like that woman may be uh, dominant when it comes to her outside partner. So let's say you share your outside partner. So she's dominant. She likes to take a little bit of the reins, a little bit of control with how another woman might interact with you as a couple. So that means she gets to take that submissive role with you. But then when it comes to outside partners, she gets to have a place of letting off the steam of her dominance. Right. There's a lot of different ways that this works, a lot of different ways that it works. Right. But that kink and fetish is something that is very much helpful when it comes to the way that you interact in a, in a relationship long term. It creates the sustainability. Right. 
you know, just like I talked about the deep throwing a little bit, you know, that's just one aspect of it. It could be foot jobs. It could be, uh, could, could be the anal sex. It could be, uh, the exhibitionism that you partake in. It could be a variety of kinks and fetishes that you may have that, you know, and, and one aspect of it is this right here. There may be some things you're not comfortable doing with every single person that you come across. But with your partner, that's who you're comfortable tapping into this deeper, darker side of your sexuality with. And by having that type of dynamic with your partner, realize chemistry becomes greater than curiosity because the things that you want to do at the deepest, darkest level of your sexuality and the shadow of your sexuality is already integrated with your partner in a way where you don't want that to be integrated with everyone else. Because you may not want to mix sex with emotions with every person that you deal with. Sometimes dealing with another person may simply just be a matter of something that you do for fun or something you do for pleasure or something you do for a little bit of excitement. But there are certain aspects of things you may not be comfortable doing with everyone else. Like let's say a man, a uh, heterosexual man, but he has a wife or a woman he's been with for a long time who he does some type of, uh, who he does like prostate play with. But let's say he doesn't want to do prostate play with any other person that he meets only with the woman who he's already built a certain level of integration with so that's who he can have an outlet for his sexual submissiveness with but when it comes to other people he operates more out of his dominance right this creates sustainability right certain things i'm not against it's just a matter of i don't believe in a necessarily allowing a person to take you further than the person that you're with unless you have that type of understanding and dynamic that that other person is into that already right and that's where the cut queen cut cold fetish comes in so i think it's very important to understand how kinks fetishes and lifestyles whether it's bdsm or or swinging or, or polyamory and all these different things and how they relate to your relationship you know when you have these understandings when you have these understandings then it, it makes the connection you have with your partner something that is more sacred something that is more exclusive even if you're not exclusive it makes it easier to sustain to create maintain sustain and establish sexual compatibility and chemistry over an extended period of time in a way that you wouldn't want to share that with everyone else in that same way where you go further with that individual than you would so you also have to look at you know mixing uh pain with pleasure right a woman may you know and that's part of the dom sub dynamic a woman may be comfortable mixing pain with pleasure with you but only wants pleasure from other people or these are things that are meant to reinforce different aspects of your non-sexual relationship in a in a in a dom sub dynamic a master slave dynamic where you know uh people say that a person doesn't want to be owned that's not always true you know you can be married and that's your owner you know you can collar a woman these things create these types of dynamics that stand out and above the the rest of the crowd in a way where just simply being young and youthful and exuberant is not going to have that same effect so just take some of these words into account take some of these words in mind you know when it comes to sexual integration a lot of it is about being able to take the deeper darker sides of your sexuality your sexual shadow and having your more long-term relationship dynamic or your more primary partnership letting that be the place where you want to experience the highest levels the highest peaks of pleasure the highest peaks of kinks and fetishes in a way that <coughs> you wouldn't even want to do that with a regular person that you meet and when you're able to mix that with your non-sexual companionship in your non-sexual uh, relationship in a way where that mixes together then you are now integrated right because you don't want it to be a matter of you know this is a person who you just deal with on a basis of your social image and your social mask and when you want to tap into more of your deeper aspects of your sexuality you want to do that more so with an individual who you don't know that well all right because that can create issues within your relationship dynamic and when you allow a person to take you further 
into the dark dark sides of your sexuality and your sexual shadow beyond your primary partner, then it's not out of the realm of possibility that that other person may become the new oasis or the new safe space, right? The new place where your thoughts and emotions and feelings are being funneled into, right? You know, like you don't want it to be a matter of your partner's, your sexuality with your partner is predicated on your social battery, but a new person who you come across is not based on your social battery, and then you are being more sexually available to another person than your primary partner. Or you meet someone and your curiosity is so much greater than the realized chemistry that you have with your partner. You know, you don't want your relationship to work that particular way. It's not something that's very, uh, it's not something that always fares well. You want to avoid having a Madonna whore complex or a gentleman gigolo complex. And that's where a lot of uh, sexual integration comes in at. And it makes it a lot easier to make the sexual attraction and compatibility sustainable. See, you want to create this cycle, this perpetual reciprocal cycle of sexual energy between the sexual validation, the sexual pleasure, and the motivation. You want these things to be centralized and focal and be a focal point of your primary partnership. <coughs> and by doing that, even if you need to take time to be in a monogamous relationship for a finite period of time, or even if that's something you want to do for an extended period, it makes realized chemistry greater than curiosity. So it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a cage, right? or to be locked down in a way that's unsettling or unbecoming to be in that type of relationship dynamic. So, you know, you have to think about the sexual goals you want to set, knowing your partner's body. You do want to have a certain level of tapping into the mixing of sex and emotions uh, when you're in a long-term relationship. You know, like I said before, I had a video <coughs> where I said that, uh, separating sex and emotions has to be learned and unlearned right it has to be learned and unlearned and with your primary partner you want to unlearn the separation of sex and emotions so that you can have a dynamic to where you are attached to them on an ego level on a sexual level on a pleasure level on a validation level in a way that draws you together binds you together it creates sustainability within your dynamic in a way where you do not feel comfortable with sharing that with every person who you come across and that's where the integration comes in. So this is just Coach Brody on kinks, fetishes, and how these things make sexual attraction sustainable. It's Coach Brody.